Next, we'll have uh, Pastor Donald Ronald, oh, sorry, Ronald Baker, uh, and he will be reading some scripture for us. Our first scripture will come from Second Chronicles chapter seven, verse fourteen. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and heal their land. Our second reading will come from Psalms 91. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and butler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that fly by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste at noonday. Ten thousand at your, at your, a thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks. Our new superintendent of schools uh, is going to come and speak next. Uh, Kim Holver Holverman. Yes, and we will gladly hear from her. She is. This is a new job, so we need to pray for her too. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, and it's, it's wonderful to be here as a person today in one of the places I count as a hometown um, to say thank you for you all coming out to support us in the schools, no matter our roles in the schools. Our full, full school, school staff are essentially back now and our students are all back on Wednesday uh, with many of them coming to their school buildings for the first time meaningfully uh, this year, tomorrow for open house. We really appreciate you waking up in the morning and wishing us well, uh, keep helping to encourage us to be safe, to be healthy, and to help our young people build the future of this community. We really appreciate your, your warm thoughts for our blessings. And, and again, it's an honor to be here as a person, and it's an honor for me to understand that you are thinking of us so warmly each day. We appreciate you very much for coming out, and God bless you. There he is. Next, we have Pastor David Hanks, and he's going to pray for uh, administrative staff, uh, new superintendent, assistant superintendent, and new admin staff. Everybody. Everybody. You know, being in an administrative role is not easy, and sometimes we take those people for granted. Because sometimes you don't, as the public, you don't always see them on a normal day. Sometimes you don't see them until, you know, the news media shows up when there's a problem. These people have a Really, it's a 60-hour work week that they have. It may not even be visible to the public. Many times you just see them sitting in an office and you don't really know what they do, but without them, trust me, the whole school would fall apart. These people do a lot behind the scenes. And uh, just briefly, I mean, I'm in an administrative role at Covenant Christian Academy. I had no idea what an administrator did, really, until I took a degree in school leadership and got involved more in the school they really do a lot that we take for granted. 
So I, with that being said, I'm going to lift these people up to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we know that there are many new administrators in, now with the joining of the Covenant and Allegheny Schools and New Highland, Allegheny Highland Schools, Lord. We lift up the new superintendent, the new assistant superintendent, board members, Lord. We lift up principals and assistant principals and administrative staff. Lord, we also lift up the administrators for the college and also for the Christian schools and for the home schools. And Lord, each of these people that are laboring behind the scenes, making sure that everybody's records get to another school on time, everybody takes their tests that they're supposed to take and gets the curriculum in charge that they need and everything that goes on, even down to organizing service contracts. These administrators are very important people, Lord, and we just lift them up that you would give them good health, that you would protect them, and, Lord, that you would give them wisdom from your, from you, Lord, for you are the source of wisdom. And, Lord, we just lift them up. That there's going to be bad days that they think that, why in the world did I take this job? And just encourage them during those days, Lord, and guard them against discouragement and depression that comes along with the job sometimes. The heavy load that they bear, Lord, help them uplift these burdens, Lord. And help them to be the leaders that we need in our community that our students can look up to and can pattern their lives after them. We ask this, Lord, in your name. Amen. Uh, Pastor Don Dr. Ronald Baker is going to uh, come up now and pray for children and students. As we come and think of the beginning of this school year, we realize how important it is to cover our young people as they go back to school. Many of them come from broken homes. Many of them don't possess what others have, but we want them to know that they are just important, as important to us as everyone else. We also want them to know that we serve a God that will cover them and protect them throughout the school year. Let us pray. God, to the true and living God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit, in union right now, we come to bless your name. We come to say thank you for just being a God that we can call upon. And God, we're calling on you now to overshadow our youth, our teenagers, our college students, our, uh, our, our uh, first beginning, kindergarten and Head Start. God, we need your protection over all of them. We're asking you to let the blood of Jesus overshadow them. God, we ask you to build up a hedge like you did with Job, uh, that Satan cannot get to them. And when they are faced with situations of peer pressure, God, we're asking for your presence right now, even starting now, to be with them. God, strengthen them, God, that they may reject that which will be detrimental to them. God, we ask you that as they go to school, give that we know, realize that school boards give out books, but God, we know you give brains. So we're asking you, God, give them what they need to be able to comprehend their lessons. God, we ask you to just overshadow them. We ask you to bless their going in and coming out from their homes to school and back to home. God, we know that we're living in troubled times, but we serve a God that is aware of every situation that can take place. God, we thank you for your divine protection. We thank you for your angels that you give charge over our young people, God to keep them from dashing their foot against the stone, to keep them from Satan having his way with them. So we thank you that your son Jesus has already, uh, God, have defeated uh, Satan and his foe. And God, we thank you for the prospering of our students as they go back to school in whatever phase they are. We praise you for being a God that we can call upon and not only call upon, but depend upon. Thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you for your tender mercies. Thank you, God, for just being our God. So we ask these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And now Pastor uh, Samuel Chung will come and uh, pray for uh, teachers and all instructors.
I want to share the Bible verse with you. Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord, your God, will be with you wherever you go. Let us pray. Our God, full of the greatest love for us, we come before you with a humble hearts yes. to ask for your blessings on this new school year. We give thanks for all our teachers and instructor, instructors. May our teachers and instructors begin the school year with renewed strength, free of weariness, and ready to take on each day with grace, wisdom, and kindness. Please fill their hearts with courage now by your mighty spirit. Fill them with your wisdom yes. so that they may be able to make a good judgment when guiding and helping others. Fill them with your peace so that when stress and anxiety comes, it would not overwhelm them. Fill them with your blessing so that they may see strength grow in your grace. We ask all this in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now he's here. There he is. Pastor Shorty Wolf will come and pray for uh, parents. Good evening, everyone. It's good to see some of our Covington brothers and sisters down here and people from all over the county, not just Clifton Forge. Uh, I'm to pray over the parents, the guardians, and the caregivers. Uh, as many of you know, a lot of grandparents nowadays are raising their grandchildren. It wasn't God's plan. It isn't God's plan. You know, we have 48 children in foster care in Allegheny County. And, and I don't know how true it was that they said it tremendous amount of social workers resign. I'm going to go to Proverbs 22.6. It says, train a child in the way he should go, and he will not part from it. When I hear people say, I raised 10 kids. Well, you raise hogs. You put a hog in a pen from the time he's born, and, and just feed him, he just stays a hog. You train children. All right. You train children the way they should go. You don't raise them. You can put them in a room, you can put them outside, you can send them to the pool. I tell people I used to send my children, drop them off to city pool. Every summer, city pool was our babysitter. And we'd go do what we wanted to do. Proverbs 22, 6, train a child in the way he should go, and he will not part from it. How many of you know that a lot of things the government touches, they mess up? This post office over here is one of them. The post office is really messed up. The government's had their hands in it. Amazon's making them look like they don't know anything. Your Social Security, they put their hands on your Social Security, they spin it everywhere. Now they want control of your schools. I always believe the silent majority was a Christian. Who we just kind of floated through life, went and voted, and didn't do nothing, didn't speak up. I think it's time we speak up for our schools and our children. Jesus offended many. We're scared of offending people. Our children, and I see it in our grandchildren. need our prayer. And our parents need our prayer. The guardians, which are the grandparents and the caregivers. The, uh, I had a couple other things I wanted to say. Just because it's a good idea doesn't make it the truth. A lot of people have a lot of good ideas. I remember when I went to school, 
He didn't have ball games on Wednesdays. You sure didn't have them on Sunday. And if you had practice on Wednesday, the coach always made sure you was out of practice on time so you could get to church. Now they have, the schools have no respect for the church. They took commandments out of school. They took prayer out of school. And guess what else they took out of school? Correction. Parents send their kids to school now and tell them, if that teacher touches you, you come and tell me and I'll go down and straighten them out. Well, I got a paddle in the second grade. You know when I told my parents? I was in my 20s. They said, why'd you do that? I said, because I'd have got to know when I get home. <laughs> when I went to school, I was went, went there to learn, not misbehave. Teachers nowadays have no control of the children. And we're gradually losing control of our schools. Let's pray for the parents and the guardians and the caretakers. Dear Heavenly Father, here today we come before you in Jesus' name, Father. Father, I thank you, Father, for parents. Parents that are willing to stand up for their children, Father. That are willing to go to these school board meetings and tell them, you work for us. You work for us. You don't train our children. We train our children. And Father, I thank you for the grandparents that's raising their, their grandchildren, Father. You know that wasn't your plan. How it got this way, I have no idea, but you do. And Father, all the caregivers out there, people who just who just run yourself ragged trying to help people, help children, and tutor. And a lot of people tutor for free. And Father, I thank you, Father, that you love each and every one of these people. You love these people in our schools. You love the, the, everyone. Father, I thank you, Father, that you love me and you love my family. And Father, you love every family sitting here, Father, that you want the best for us. You want the best for our, these parents, the best for these children. And Father, I just can't, can't imagine living life without you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, Shorty. Now we're going to have another song. Give thanks. So stand and sing with them. Yeah. 
in the nation. 